This is a Beato Oceanus 38.1 and this, I think, is a particularly well-proportioned sailing boat. It's very nicely done, so I'm going to take you on board and give you, of course, the full tour. We'll start right at the back here. You've got this retractable bathing platform, so that will fold up to 90 degrees flush against the transom and there's a couple of other things to show you whilst we're in this area like for example this is for a life raft in here and the idea is that when this is up flush against the back if you want to get to it in a hurry you just undo these catches chuck that out of the way and it's there and ready to go we've got uh, seats here for the twin wheels and these will lift up completely out of the way so they just unhook like that up against the side and there's legs fold away like that there's a little clip that should go around there and underneath those you've actually got some quite useful storage areas and access so that's pretty good let's put that one back down twin wheels of course and those little sockets on the floor those are for emergency tillers so if you ever had a problem with the steering mechanism you can still handle the boat and engine controls on this one so your throttle and gear shift is there you've also got your navigation screen that's down here and your engine start stop and rev counter and so on are also on that side and what they've done is they've kept these fairly well back so that you can access really easily around without having to clamber over people to get onto the side decks so I think we'll do that in fact, so we'll wander around first and then we'll head back through the cockpit, show you that and show you the interior. So up here, this one's actually got the GRP arch, you can see it just here, that's this fella, across the back. That means that all of the rigging is up out of the way, it's not in people's way when on board the boat, whether you're sailing or whether you're stationary, that is completely tucked out of the way. And also of course plenty of protection from that as well, if the weather's not quite so nice. And then up here, along the side decks, this one has the in-mast furling and it has the roller furling for the Genoa as well. So that mainsail just fills up inside the mast and rolls out when you want to use it. Dead easy. Let's head on forward a little bit further. Flush deck hatches, always a good thing. So they drop down and then you're not going to trip on those or stub your toe. So they're excellent. And then a really uncluttered foredeck. And in fact, right up here on the bow, you'll see it's got two anchor cradles. So if you're mooring in the med, you want to put two anchors out, you could have a second one on there. This red one here, that's a spinnaker halyard. So you can hoist a spinnaker if you want to. And then you've got your winch here, of course, for the anchor. And that is the chain locker. Down in there. Very good. But a very uncluttered boat, isn't it? And that is the mast, obs. Let's head on back a bit further. You can see how all of this is led off, so you don't really need to come up here at all if you don't want to. It's all controllable from the winches. You've got one for the mainsail and one for the Genoa up on the coach roof there. And then you've got your sheeting winches on the side. Again, they're right back by the helm station, so you're not having to clamber over people just here. Let's come right back down the side and take a step on. I'll show you a couple of things in the cockpit. The table has lifting leaves, so that comes up on both sides, makes a really big dining table. So at the end of the day, you can all sit around, talk about your sailing, have a few drinks, have a meal. Wonderful. And that's a storage area in underneath there, a bit full of stuff at the minute, so I won't show you that in too much detail, but I will show you this because it's huge. Let's put that right up there. Look at that! There isn't much you couldn't get in there, is there? So if you want to roll up dinghy, if you want to put your folding bikes, if you've got inflatable paddle boards, that's a great place to put them. Excellent! Now let's drop that fella back down. Like so. And we'll head on and have a look at the interior. Now as we head down here, you can have these steps teak faced if you prefer rather than the white and this one has the light oak interior so it makes it feel really large and spacious. In fact it is large and spacious anyway but that light finish just exaggerates it. That's really good. And one thing I have noticed is these big hull windows. You've got lifting leaves as you can see where that one's up so you can see what it looks like and that one's down but of course you can fold that up, you can fold that down, that's all very adaptable. 
and bottles. Very important. But look at these big hull windows. They're throwing so much light into here. There, up here, same on the other side as well, of course. But even if we come up here into the forward cabin, it's got these twin doors, so it opens really wide, and then this lovely big bed. And in the morning, good morning, Port Hamble. Very pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. That is a nice cabin. And of course, hatch up above. These have got ocean air blinds, so if you want to close those off, you can do. And in fact, if you put it that way, well, then you get a mosquito screen. Keep the little blighters out. And you can see as well, there's curtains on those windows. So if you do want to keep that nice and dark, get a bit of sleep, not a problem. Let's head on back through here. One thing you'll find on this side is the navigation station. That's this little chart table here, so you sit here facing backwards, so it's not taking up too much space, but it's a usable little area. In fact, there is an infill, so that you can put a cushion into here and extend this all the way along, and you can fold that up, move the mic thing out of the way, and that clips shut like that. There's also storage up above it, and then you've got your VHF radio and your stereo system, and so on. Now, on the other side of the boat is the galley, so again, lots of things like the bin and cutlery drawer, all soft clothes. Underneath here is more storage, and under the floor you've got access to the bilges and a bit more storage as well. The cooker, of course, is gimbaled, so that will swing. When your boat's healing over, you can still use that, like so. And if we move this out of the way without dropping it... <laughs> is this a good idea? Not a very good idea, but I think we're okay. I'll show you this really quickly, because that's the fridge. And then we'll put that back before we lose it all down the back. I think that was probably a poor idea, but we got away with it. Now behind here, storage incidentally, then up behind as well. And this is the second cabin. Really good size. The bed on this one goes across ways, which is unusual on a sailing boat. It usually goes lengthways, but it makes for a really decent sized cabin. You've got opening portholes in here. Again, lots of storage in places like this. That is a decent little cabin, isn't it? Very nice. Now this is a two cabin version. They do do a three cabin, but this is by far the preferred layout. And I'll show you why. Because over here, this is the heads. Perfectly decent size. And there is a little shower that pulls out of there and a drain in the floor. So you think, okay, that's fair enough. But check this out. Back here is a completely separate shower unit. Now, of course, if you had the third cabin, you'd lose this and you would lose that massive storage void in the cockpit. And that's why the vast majority of these, and it has been an incredibly popular boat for Benito, go out with this layout. I was told by the dealer that they've sold nearly 600 of these in the last, I think it's two or three years this boat's been out. And uh, and that's just in Europe, they don't know how many have been sold worldwide. Um, but they think it could be getting on towards a thousand, so yeah. You can see why though, for a 38 foot boat, which is a popular size, this is a great layout. And a lot of thoughts gone into it. What else can I show you? I can show you the engine that's underneath here. And he did tell me how powerful it is. <laughs> I've forgotten. I think it's 30 horsepower. I think there's a 30 and a 40 horsepower option. But don't quote me on that. If that's important, check. But I'm pretty sure it's 30 or 40 horsepower. It might be 20 or 30. I know I'm useless. But um, I filmed a lot of boats today and my mind's just gone blank. So check on that if it's important, but certainly it is more than adequate for this boat. And the poor chap who went away and looked that up for me has now got his head in his hands. Excellent. Let's go back outside. Just let 
the old shoes back on. And I think we're going to head up onto the front because it's such a beautiful day here in Port Hamble. And we'll finish off up here. Yeah, this looks like a good spot. So I'm going to say huge thanks to Ancaster who organised that tour for me, the dealers, and I will put a link to them in the description. And as ever, huge thanks to you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've not subscribed, do me a favour, hit that little button, hit the bell, and it'll keep you posted with more uploads. And we'll look forward very much to catching you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.